Hello fellow programmers, Jack here. Today I want to show you a really awesome data structure. It's called the binary index tree. It's really fast, it's easy to learn, and it only takes about 10 lines of code to write. The binary index tree was developed by Peter Fenwick in 1994 and therefore is also known as Fenwick tree. Okay, what problem do we want to solve? We have an array of numbers and we want to perform two operations. The first one is we want to compute prefix sums. And the second one is we want to add a value to an element. So for instance, we want to compute the sum of the first five numbers. The first five numbers are 1, 7, 3, 0, 5 and the sum is 16. Now we want to add the value 5 to position 4. So we take the 0 and update to 5. By the way, I use one indexed notation here. So the first element in the array is at index 1. In most programming languages, the index of the first element is usually 0. But there is a really cool trick that you can do when you start with 1. I'll tell you at the end how you can have the best of both worlds. And then we want to compute the sum of the first seven numbers. The first seven numbers are 1, 7, 3, 5, 5, 8, 3. Notice that we don't have the zero anymore. The zero is now a 5. And the sum of these seven numbers is 32. Okay, what are possible approaches to this problem? If we have a lot of add operations we want to perform, then the obvious answer is use an, uh, use an array. We can simply store each number in the array. If we want to add a value, then we simply update the, the element. If we want to compute a prefix sum, then we iterate over all these numbers in the prefix and compute it. Now the sum is really slow though. If, for instance, in the worst case, we have to iterate over all elements in the array. This is O of n. But the add is really fast, O of 1. Now, if we want to compute a lot of prefixes, then we can use a prefix sum array. We store all the prefixes in the array, so computing a prefix is instant. We only have to look up the element. The bad thing now is, though, if we want to add a value, we have to change a bunch of numbers in this array. In the worst case, if we change the first element in the original array, then we have to update all the numbers in this array. So sum is really fast, add is really slow. We need something better. And here's the idea. We use the binary representation of each number. For instance, the binary representation of 13 is 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 0. 8 plus 4 plus 1. Okay, so we want to compute the first 13 numbers. The idea here is we compute the range of the first 8 numbers, which is 29. Then we compute the range of the next 4 numbers, which is 10. And then we compute the, uh, the range of the next one number, which is 4. If we have all these ranges pre-computed, then we only have to add these three numbers. What ranges do we have to pre-compute that we can use the binary representation? Let's see at an example. I have here an array with 14 elements, and now we divide it in binary ranges. So the first binary range is a range of length 1, from 1 to 1. So the next binary range is of length 2, from 1 to 2. The next binary range is from 1 to 4, which is of length 4. The next binary range is from 1 to 8, which is length 8. And the next binary range would be from 1 to 16, of length 16. But this is bigger than our array itself, so we don't use it. Now we have a lot of holes here. So we go to the first hole 
and start again. We want to fill this hole from 3 to 3 with again with binary ranges. So we start with a new range of length 1, which is the range from 3 to 3. Okay. So this hole is closed. The next hole is the hole from 5 to 7. Again, we fill this hole with binary ranges. We start with a range of length 1 from 5 to 5. Then we take an, uh, a range of length 2 from 5 to 6. Now the next range would be from 5 to 8, which is of length 4, but 8 is not, not anymore in the hole. So we simply start again with a range of length 1. So this is the range from 7 to 7. Okay, the next big hole is from 9 to 14. Again, we fill it with binary ranges. So we take the range from 9 to 9, which is length 1, from 9 to 10, which is length 2, the range 9 to 12, which is of length 4, and then length 8 is already too big. So the next big, the next hole is from 11 to 11, which we can fill with a range of length 1, and the next hole from 13 to 13 with a range of length 1, and from 13 to 14 with a range of length 2. Now we created the binary index 3D array, which consists of the numbers 1, 8, 3, 11, 5, 13, 3, 29, and so on. Now how can we use this information to compute prefix sums? Okay, so we want to compute the sum of the first 13 numbers. We start at the position 13, which is the range 13 to 13. Previously we saw that we can divide the first 13 numbers into a range of 8 numbers, a range of 4 numbers and a range of 1 number. So we have the range of the single number already. How can we get to the range of the previous, previous 4 numbers? We simply go one up and left to the range 9 to 12. And how can we get, go back to the to the range with the 8 numbers? We go up and left and now we have the first 8 numbers. We see that we only have to add the numbers 29, 10 and 4. So this up and left motion, how can we describe it this to a computer? Let's see at the indexes in binary representation. So we represent the, uh, the indices 1 to 14 with the binary numbers 0001 to 1110. So again, we want to compute the sum of the first 13 numbers. So we start with the number 13. The binary representation of 13 is 1101. We here see the previous number was 1100. How can we get from 13 to 14? We simply remove the last set bit. The last set bit in 13 is 1. When we remove the 1, when we flip it to a 0, then we end up with 12, with 1100. And here again we flip the last set bit, which is, the, which is 4. We flip it to a 0, so we get 1000 and we end up with the number 8. Okay, another example. We want to compute the sum of the first 7 numbers. So we start at the position 7, which is the range 7 to 7. We want to get the, uh, the previous range, so we go up and left to a range 5 to 6, and then up again, up and left again to the range 1 to 4. Again, let's look at the binary representations. We start at the position 7, which is 0, 1, 1, 1. We flip the last set bit, so we get 0, 1, 1, 0, which is 6, and we flip the last set bit again, and we end up with 1, 0, 1, 1, which is the element 4. So we now have a way to go back, uh, to go to find all the previous ranges that we want to cover. How can we describe the flipping of the last set bit to a computer? There's a really cool trick that works. 
if you have a number x, then we can extract the last set bit by computing x bitwise and the negative of x. And then we can simply remove it by computing x minus the results. Let's look at an example. Here again we have the number 13, which is in the binary representation 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Negative 13 is represented by a computer by 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. This is called the tooth complement of a number. A computer stores negative numbers by flipping all bits and then at the end adding one. And this adding one motion allows us to extract the last bit by simply doing a bitwise end. And then when we remove it, we end up with the next number. Okay, and here's the simple implementation of the sum method. It's only six lines of code. We basically create a variable that stores the sum. We call it here result. We iterate over the indices until we end up with the indices zero, which doesn't exist. We simply add up all the values and update the indices. And at the end, we return the result. Okay, so we have a nice operation to compute sums in logarithmic time. Can we achieve the same thing for the add operation? Remember back, we want to add a value to an element. Now that we have this range construct, we have to add this number to multiple ranges. To be more precise, we want to add the value to all the ranges that include the element. So here we want to add 2 to the position 5. At the position 5 there is a 5 and we change this to a 7. Now we have to find all the ranges that include the position 5. The first one is obvious, it's simply the, the range at position 5 which is the range 5 to 5. So we change this also to a 7. The next range that includes also a 5 sits simply on the right side. So we go to the next range, which is 5 to 6. Here we change the 13 to a 15. Then again we want to go on the right side to the next range. Here in this whole 5 to 7 there is no next right side. So we go one up to the range 1 to 8. And we change here the 29 to 31. And this is all. So again, here we have a logarithmic algorithm for this task. Let's see again at the binary representation what happens here. First we go from 0, 1, 0, 1 to 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we go from 0, 1, 1, 0 to 1, 0, 0, 0. Basically, now we add the last uh, set bit always. So at first we add 1 to go from 5 to 6 and then we add 2 from 6 to 8. And adding the last set bit is exactly the same as removing the last set bit. We can extract the last set bit by the bitwise end and then we simply add it instead of subtracting it. Okay, here's a really simple implementation of add four lines of code. Now the index gets bigger and bigger, so we have to check if the index is in bound. So we add the value to the binary index tree array and update the index. Okay, here are a few implementation notes I want to make. As I said before, we use one index notation. This is because the trick only works with the one index notation. So to keep it this trick, we simply use an array of length n plus 1. The first element at position 0 is, we don't care about it. Simply ignore it. How do we initialize the array at the beginning? We could use a really simple approach. So we start with a zero array 
all elements in the array are zero and insert each element with the add method. Each of the adds takes about uh, log n time. So uh, this, uh, this initialization takes n log n, which is mostly fast. There is a linear algorithm. You can find it in the description if you want. Mostly the n log n approach is fast enough. Here's another thing. What if we want to compute the sum of ranges? For instance, we want to compute the sum of the numbers 5 to 10. If we want to compute the sum of the range from, from index 1 to index 2, then we simply compute the, the prefix sum of index 2 minus this is the prefix sum of index 1 minus 1. So we compute the complete prefix and then we move the few elements at the beginning. It, this implementation is obviously also log n. You can use the binary index tree also for other operations. For instance, for product, xor, or others. But you can't use it for minimax. Why? Because the min, because minimum and maximum are not reversible. For instance, if the minimum of an array is zero, and the minimum of the first half of the array is also zero, then you have no way to determine which value the minimum of the second half is. So you can't do the range sum or the, or the range minimum. You can do a prefix minimum if this is all you need. If you want to compute range minimums, then you have to use a different data structure. You can use, for instance, a segment tree or an interval tree. I might make a tutorial to these topics a different time. And here is a little link for you. I implemented uh, the int I implemented the binary index tree in C++ and Python, and you can find these implementations on GitHub. The li links are in the description. I hope this little presentation helped you and you now understand binary index trees.